Well, this is kind of exciting. Got home today and this was waiting for me. And uh, the only thing I'm a little concerned about is the shape of this corner here, but uh, I guess we'll find out if if that's anything or not. So the person that packaged this was kind enough to say that, that you open it on this end, so that is appreciated since how would a person know you didn't have instructions. Trying not to damage the uh, packing material or the things inside the box here. Probably picked about the dullest knife we own, but uh, I didn't want to damage anything. But uh, sure doesn't want to open very well. Packaging material. I love this. Wrapped in saran wrap and says start here. Now that's that's some kindness right there. Looks like that's all that is in the box, the outer box, I should say, but we're gonna, gonna start here. <laughs> so, yes, you can see what the box says. It's a frontier set. Um, kind of kind of excited to see what things look like inside. Hopefully it traveled okay. Um, frontier sets. Uh, are not super rare, uh, but they're significant. Um, the standpoint that my understanding is the the idea behind the Frontier set was to celebrate the 50th anniversary of Flyer, and they had a special commemorative train. I believe it's gold and red, um, but then they also had the more common one that is what should be in here, and. Uh, one of the things that's kind of neat about this is uh, the wheel arrangement. So most of us that have flyer stuff have a ton of Atlantics, and uh, I'm no no different there. But uh, what's kind of fun about this is it does not have the trailing truck. The engine does not have the trailing truck, which makes it a four lead wheels, four driving wheels, zero trailing wheels, known as a 440. And the 440 was more commonly known as an American. The reason for that is the Americas um, initially got their steam locomotives from England. And uh, English rails were built to a different standard than what we had here. And as such, um, they, they were much more uh, gently laid. Um, with uh, large radius curves um, and gradients that weren't uh, super rough and track that the track railroad bed that was very very well laid um, and of course England is a much smaller country overall here in the states uh, we were blazing uh, frontiers with uh, with train track and so um, the, the, the goal was to make money, and the, there was uh, a lot of expedience put into laying track, and the result was rough, rough track. So um, one solution that some of the early railroads came up with that was very successful was to add um, trailing or add front trucks 
to um, to a, a 040, um, and the early engines were just basically four driving wheels. And uh, doing this helped the the train engines um, handle the track much better, and those those front trucks would actually guide the trains around the curves, um, so it provided better tracking. And the other thing that happened then, a little bit later date, is an interesting three pivot design. So you had um, you had support underneath the front four wheels, and then you had support underneath each side of the drivers. So you had this this three point support structure, and um, just like a stool is, that's a very stable um, but yet flexible support system. So the suspension. Um, could travel, you know, up and down on either side and back and forth, and uh, just could handle rough, rough track that way. So getting getting a little bit off subject, but all that to say, it's it's cool to have um, finally in uh, 440. And uh, so let's uh, take a look at the engine here. Okay. We've got the uh, wonderful smokestack over here, and um, here's the engine. Now it's not mint, and and the uh, the former owner told me a little bit about what to expect, so no surprises. Uh, you can see the the stickers torn a little bit on this side, and this wrap here has come loose on the. Uh, I believe that's a sand dome. Either sand dome or steam dome, not sure which. Um, on that side, this side looks very good. Um, you can see uh, these engines are, are somewhat simple. And these were a later pro product, and I failed to look up exactly. I want to say about 1955, um, but obviously hold that lightly and don't get mad at me if I'm a little bit off there. I'm doing that from memory, and I may, may be off a little bit. Um, but here is um, the reversing unit, and these are the kind of the last design of, of uh, solenoid reversing units that they used. Um, and this here is what locks it in forward or reverse. Um, it's interesting to me that it's here in the tender sticking down just where this uh, truck can almost run into it, so that's interesting. Another thing that I don't know how well you can see this or not um, is the engine has um, brushes on the side of it, um, but unlike most steam engines, they're square, square brushes. They might be a little bit rectangle, but more more square. So again, this is um, a later development of the motor. Um, something else that's kind of interesting about these engines is if you notice the color of the driving wheels, they're aluminum. Um, there was, if memory serves, um, one, or two of the Atlantics um, that had aluminum. Of course, I'll probably get in trouble with that statement, but um, this is a more rare variation um, to have the aluminum drive wheels, and then these would have uh, traction uh, tires as well. Um, of course, being later, it has the the horn or the uh, coupling with the coupler with the uh, weight at the bottom, brass pickup wheels, and also a disconnectable tender. Um, I guess i got to make sure I'm on the thumb there. Uh, and then uh, this has got a four-wire four uh, connection that's solid. There's no, no one plugging this one. <laughs> so um, uh, also this has got the, the smoke, smoke unit. And I'm assuming it's got chuff, but I can't recall from those of you that have these and have made videos in the past if, uh, if it has a chuff or not. It would make sense that it would. Um, but uh, I think so. Go ahead and put the stack on like this. So, anyhow, pretty nifty. <laughs> That's not a dated term at all, is it? Nifty. All right, so in addition to that wonderful engine, uh, let's see, we've got a car here, Overland Express. I also believe that when these first came out, there were just an engine and two cars, and then you could send in, uh, I've seen some brochures where you could send in something free and actually get the car sent to you, or maybe it was 50 cents or something like that. Um, 
And again, I don't recall which one of these was the extra, um, but this one has all three. And again, this may have been one of the later um, variations on, on these sets. But just real quickly, um, I've done a little bit of research and I've got a video on, on the history of passenger cars. And I really was hoping to have one of these in hand at the time, um, but pictures had to do. Um, but the early passenger cars, if the, for those of you that saw the video, this will be a refresher. The earlier passenger cars were wood. And uh, you can see that's what's represented here. These rods at the bottom would have been steel, and they would have been used to help reinforce um, the overall strength of the car, keep it from kind of slouching or swooping in the middle. Um, but these cars would have been all wood. And the other thing that would have happened is they would have had a fireplace inside of them that would have burned probably coal. Um, there could have been other fuels used. But the unfortunate thing that would happen in the, back in the early days is um, trains were not uh, known for, for uh, having good signals back in the day. In fact, signaling came along um, much stronger in the 1880s um, towards the turn of the century and, and continues to get better and better all the time. But before that especially, um, trains... Uh, would be traveling maybe too close together or there'd be a breakdown or there'd be something wrong with the track a train would have to stop and you'd have a collision and if there was a collision with these old wooden passenger cars it, uh, it was really awful um, what would happen is something called telescoping where one car would actually physically ram into the car in front of it and kind of telescope inside you know the frame because it would just come apart like toothpicks of course, everyone inside is is surrounded by flying debris, flying wood, um, and you've got all this car momentum coming in behind it. The one behind that would come in, and just like you pull out a telescope that's that's you know folded into itself, that kind of thing would happen. And so the maiming and the the carnage was just awful. Then after all of that, if you know, as if that weren't enough, you had all these live coals from these little these um, stoves in each of these cars now you've got tinder and so oftentimes after these terrible terrible accidents everything would catch on fire and so the loss of life was pretty steep pretty morbid sorry um, but uh, history is history um, what's interesting here is uh, the number 40 car the baggage car and the uh, number 20 car um, I'm guessing we're original to the set. And then here, this guy has this emblem. So um, this, would, I'm just, again, I'm just guessing maybe. I shouldn't probably do that because all of you out there that know for sure are just cringing at uh, everything I'm saying. But uh, here we go. So we've got a fantastic engine. Uh, we've got some great cars. And uh, we'll uh, put it on the track and see what happens. That... Uh, Two of the cars came off, or came uncoupled. Uh, engine sounds a little bit dry. Um, wheels are pretty dirty, so definitely some cleaning to do. Um, I do not hear chuff. So I guess that answers the one question that I had, but I do see some smoke, but it is, it is puffing out. So maybe, maybe it's just uh, a chuff unit that needs some attention, I'm hoping. Because uh, it certainly is puffing out like there's a tough unit behind it, pushing with some force. All right. Just out of curiosity, I'm going to drop the reversing lever. Or E-unit here. Let's see what happens if we've got any movement in the E-unit. So one of the things that I, I might have mentioned, no, I guess I didn't mention this earlier, is the later um, E-units um, actually did not have a, a neutral to them. It was, you know, forward or reverse. So um, you can see that's what's going on here. It's 
So what is, you know, you turn to this YouTube page, it's all about American Flyer trains, and you have some guy who uh, stumbles all over himself and uh, doesn't really know much about the engine that he's, that he's highlighting here. Um, but unfortunately, sometimes that little kid in me comes out where I get all excited and I just want to run trains and uh, figure the rest of it out as we go along. And that's kind of what happened here. So um, if I've offended anyone for my ignorance, I apologize. Um, if, <laughs> if you're shocked that, uh, that there's sometimes things I don't know, sorry for that rude surprise, but uh, um, there's lots that I have to learn. And I thank you all for those of you out in Flyer Land and the community that uh, helped me figure things out. Um, much appreciated. And uh, I hope this has been fun. I hope you've enjoyed this. Um, it's, it's been fun. There's obviously some more work to do in the engine to get it working a little better. But uh, a great start. Happy with what we've uh, seen here with the way things are operating. So uh, no complaints. And uh, Steve, thank you for, uh, for, for selling this to me. Really appreciate it. So until next time, um, stay safe and uh, enjoy your trains and uh, God bless. Take care.